Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and I'm going to use this tutorial to show how to do a grouped bar chart in StatCrunch, an online statistics program, to compare the frequencies of symptoms among two groups of uh, persons who had been abused. What I'm going to do is use a data set that has been already exists in StatCrunch. So after uh, checking in, signing in over here, I come up here to explore and click on the triangle and choose data because I'm looking for a data set. And then I come over here to browse all and I'm going to type in what I'm looking for. Now because I've already used this data set, it pops up immediately. It's domviol.xls for domestic violence.xls in Excel spreadsheet. I press search and I'm looking for this one right here with the purple wristband. I click on that and it brings up a spreadsheet that talks about whether people had abused, that's a zero one, no for they had not been abused, one for yes they had, and this one here group codes for the severity of abuse. It's important to note that this uh, variable got coded differently from what is mentioned down here. Down here it's zero one two three and up here it's one two three four, but the pattern is the same. The reason there are people who have not been abused is because they also included the staff at the shelter who serve as a nice comparison group for the prevalence of a lot of these symptoms. Uh, in particular, the one that we're going to look at is the whether the person reports having had headaches in the last year. That's this variable right here, SXL head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to graphics because I want to make a chart and I'm going to use a bar plot with data. I'm doing the data because I have the original data file that, with a one row for each person as opposed to just a summary table. So I click on that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down whether a person has um, been abused as the column variables and then I'm going to group it by whether they have had headaches. And if I just click create graph right now this is what I get. It indicates whether they've been abused here on the bottom where 0 equals no and 1 equals yes. And then the legend tells us that the blue bars mean the person has not had a headache in the last year and the red bars indicate that they have had. There's a pr pretty dramatic pattern here but I'm going to wait a moment to talk about it. I'm going to go back to the options so I can edit the charts. There's a few things that need to be done here to clean this up and make it uh, more interpretable. So I click on edit this is the first uh, dialog box that we had. I'm going to click Next. This one right here, Type, would just change the numbers on the uh, going up the side. Not worried about that. This I would use if I had a whole bunch of different categories. I don't. Uh, this one, the order that it puts things in can sometimes be helpful. I'm not worried about it right now. I click Next. You do need to have labels to make these things work well. I'm going to start by putting a title across the entire chart. And I will put Headaches among uh, respondents in a dom domestic violence shelter. Okay, good. Then I'm going to put um, an axis across the bottom that will say, oh, you know, I can just move this over for a moment. Put that right there and put that one right there so you can see what I'm referring to. So that's the title that's going to go across the top here. Now I need this axis that says abused 0 and 1. And I'm going to put um, has respondent been abused. And I'm going to put, because um, it's in StatCrunch it's a 0, 1 variable, which I happen to know means is yes and no because it's an indicator variable and it's a very common approach. However, I do want to spell it out right here, so I'm going to put no equals zero, yes equals one. And that's in the same order that they appear across the bottom. Then up the y-axis, that's where it says frequency right here, and I want to replace that with something a lot shorter. I'm just going to put n with headaches. All right, I'm going to click next. And this I would only use if I had multiple charts that I wanted to put on one page. I'm not worried about that. So I just press Create Graph and it will modify the graph on the left. Okay. Now it says across the top, headaches among respondents in a domestic violence shelter. 
This here indicates that N or the number with headaches. Down here says, has respondent been abused? No. Oh, shoot. I got to fix that. Let me come back here. Headaches, has respondent been abused? No, of course, should be zero. Okay, it's very common that I have to do these things more than once. Uh, headaches among respondents in a domestic violence shelter, has respondent been abused? No equals zero, one equals yes, and this indicates the presence or absence of headaches. All right, um, just a quick set of interpretation. Although normally we would like to convert things into rates, which um, can take into consideration the difference in the sample size, because you know if you take the people here who have not been abused and stack them up, it's less than 40 people. Whereas if you take the people who have been abused and stack them up, it's you know 100 or so. And it'd be nice to look at the percentages who have had abuse or not. However, the pattern in this one is very clear and very informative. We don't even need to do that, especially because the number of people in each group who have not had headaches is basically the same. It's around 10 in each group. And then the number who have had headaches, this one goes up to about 25 or so. This one goes all the way up to 90. This is a huge increase in the prevalence of headaches among people who have been abused uh, and are now in the domestic violence shelter. And so that is one good way to compare the presence or absence of a categorical or dichotomous outcome among different categories of people.